Hey what's up guys, this is Faith and Phoenix from Dark Sparks Gaming. Welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing how to beat Hero. To some, Hero can be a difficult character to play versus because of his diversity and his menu. And in this video, we're going to be showing all of those weaknesses and how to break that all down. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, before we get into the start of the video, I quickly want to go over some menu percents and how these menu percents will work with Hero and the chances of certain command selections popping up on Hero's menu. Quick ones to know are Magic Burst and Kamikaze have the least likely chance of appearing on Hero's menu, and then the most likely being Flame Slash, Crackle Slash, or Hatchet Man. There's a couple other ones that have their weird percents in which they'll pop up like Hocus Pocus being 5% and Kaklang being 8.30%. And then there's a general rule of thumb for Hero's menu. Spells that were in one menu will not appear in the next one. Thus, you can manipulate it in different percents. So Hero players, if they want, if they know they have certain abilities or spells they want to use in certain percents against their opponent, they'll keep certain spells on handy or they'll use certain spells in certain scenarios so that they'll have them for later situations. It's kind of complicated to think about but basically if a hero player wants to have magic burst later in the match they won't use it at the beginning of the match. Kind of makes sense? Okay with all that out the way let's get into the starting points of hero's menu. For starters to beat hero we're going to have to understand what the game plan of hero really is. Most hero players want to zone and use their RNG of their downbeat to their advantage. The first thing we need to learn is how to read hero's command selection menu. This method of reading hero's menu is originally created by Parappa, he's an extremely good hero player, and this method is probably one of the best ways to be an opponent and read hero's menu, and hero players do this themselves. And this strategy first starts off with hero pulls up his menu, you want to then determine how much space you have between hero. That way you can know which command selections he's most likely going to use. You kind of have to have that kind of preset in your mind. Then instead of reading the entire menu, read the name of each command, but only the first few letters. That way it can give you a key as to what command it is. For instance, if Hero pulls out his menu and the letters are K-A-M, that means that that command is Kamikaze. You don't have to really read the whole thing and waste time on that. You want to be able to quickly read it and then react to what Hero may be able to do against you. Knowing what abilities Hero has at his disposal is half the battle. If you know that he has mainly abilities like Flame Slash or Crackle Slash on his menu, those are all close range abilities, so don't get next to him or else he's probably going to use those. Against long range abilities like Kaboom or Sizzle, you have to be able to have your shield ready or be able to reflect that projectile back at Hero. Okay, now that we know how to read Hero's menu, you want to be able to hit Hero so that way you can actually win the game. We're going to go over some of Hero's biggest weaknesses, with his first weakness being Disadvantage State. For those of you who don't know, Disadvantage State is quite simply when a character is trapped in a combo and doesn't have the advantage in a situation. Hero's disadvantage state is especially bad because one, he doesn't have many out of shield options outside of whoosh which is the short charge up B. That's only really used to retreat to platforms and if you're on a stage like Found Destination you really can't retreat to platforms on that. Jab is another option that some hero players will go with but outside of whoosh and jab, Hero's kinda in trouble when it comes to out of shield options and especially in disadvantage state because if you play against characters who have really good spacing on shields or they have moves that are completely safe on shield, Hero can't do anything about it and especially since his grab is kinda bad, all of the attributes stack up and it makes it extremely difficult for Hero to get out of disadvantage state. Okay, we understand that that's one of the weaknesses that Hero has, but there's a couple other things that I wanna talk about when it comes to weaknesses with Hero. Alright, it's time to get into the good stuff. Now we're going to be talking about Hero's Recovery and his landing options. So Hero's Recovery is kind of straightforward but kind of not at the same time because you have options like Zoom and Accelerado which can help Hero recover horizontally. But for now we're just going to talk about his normal upbeat before we move on to Zoom and Accelerado. Hero's Recovery is kind of linear and it's kind of straightforward when he's underneath or trying to recover vertically to the stage. The only real mix up hero players have for recovering is just charging their upbeat longer. Which means that if hero is trying to grab that ledge and he's underneath the stage, 
The only way he's gonna get back is if you don't throw out a move that has a lingering hitbox. Moves with lingering hitboxes that last long enough, it will catch Hero and Hero will die from it. With this in mind, you wanna be able to grab most of Hero's stocks. One, if you're using that lingering hitbox and he's trying to recover, you kinda wanna force him off stage. This is kind of like a golden trick to beating Hero, but most people kind of really don't know is that if you force him off stage and get him in that wrong scenario where he has to charge up B for really long and he's going to get hit by a lingering hitbox or a move that just lasts forever, or if he's caught in a situation where he has to recover with up B horizontally, he can't really protect himself and he's just kind of stuck in that freefall animation. Hero's kind of like Ike or Krom in a sense, that if he's going to up B, he wants to snap ledge with his up B. He doesn't want to land on top of the stage with up B because of his vulnerability, and he doesn't really want to go over the ledge into you because then he's just going to get punished for it. On top of getting back to the stage, Hero has problems landing. Really the only options Hero has for landing are Nair, B Reverse Frizz, or like Double Jump and maybe even air dodge in certain situations or certain scenarios. But outside of that, Hero has some trouble trying to get back to that stage or landing in general. So you want to be able to punish Hero and this is where you want to get most of your damage in because you know how he's going to recover with up B, but this is when the other two factors come into play, which I'm going to talk about here. Zoom and Accelerado. Starting off with Zoom, Zoom can be extremely hard to edgeguard when Hero has it at his disposal. The closer he is to the blast zone, the more likely he is to get Zoom. When he's about 40 units close to the blast zone, he has a 53% chance of getting Zoom on his menu. Which, Zoom is pretty much a free recovery for Hero, but Zoom is still one of those moves that it's not going to happen that often during a set, and if it does, it is a free recovery pretty much for him, and he also lands at random spots, so it's kind of hard to predict where Hero is going to land with Zoom. From my personal experience and from what I've seen other people say, Hero normally or generally lands towards the middle of the stage when he has Zoom, so keep that in mind so that way you can try to punish Hero when he tries to land. For Accelerado, it's a little bit different. When Hero has Accelerado offstage, it drastically increases his speed. He goes from 0 to 100 real quick, and he can definitely go 0 to 100 if he uses Accelerado in the right situation and he hits you with it. The thing that makes Accelerado so scary is that Hero becomes basically the speed of Sonic with a sword, and that can help lead into a lot of combos. And with the speed of Accelerado as well, it makes moves that don't normally combo with Hero combo. And this can be extremely scary because he'll come out of the middle of nowhere from landing, and then he'll just land a whole bunch of damage on you, and then you're like, okay, where did that come from? When Hero pops a move like Accelerado though, it lasts for roughly 10 seconds. That's something you want to keep in mind because you want to be able to have that 10 second window of okay, I know he's going to be faster than me, I may have to play defensive against him. Or you might want to go aggressive against Hero depending upon what character you are. I usually zone Hero from personal experience against him when he has Accelerado because he uses Accelerado or most heroes use Accelerado to close the gap between you. Try to zone him so that way the Accelerado goes away and then he's a lot easier to deal with when he's slower. Now that we've gone over recovery abilities, we're now going to transition over to abilities like Hatchet Man, Caracal Slash, your Slash and your Laser Zoning type abilities. So I'm not going to be going over all of the abilities that Hero has for his command selections, I'm only going to be going over a select few that I think are the key abilities that you'll see with Hero. The rest of the abilities, if you want to see that, I suggest you watch Parappa's guide on how to use the different spells or command selections with Hero, because this is a guide on how to beat Hero, so I'm not going to go over every single one of his abilities. Let's first talk about Caracal Slash. Caracal Slash is Hero's slash move that when it's used, this move can freeze your opponent. A key thing about this move is that when it's used, your opponent can act immediately out of the freezing. So there's a set amount of time for when they're frozen, which is about a good two to three seconds, and then after that, they can act immediately out of that with any attack or any move they want to. Since this guide is on how to beat Hero, we want to act immediately out of this. But in some scenarios, we do have to be weary because the Hero player may be waiting for us to break out of the freeze and then punish whatever move we go for because the move we go for may be laggy, so we have to be very, very careful. This move is just like Caracal Slash, but it has burn damage and it deals 26%. Something worth noting with this move is that when it's used, it can two frame, so you want to be careful of that because if you're trying to recover and you see 
flame slash on that menu, don't go towards the ledge or you will get two framed. Then you have Hatchet Man, which deals a whopping 42% damage as extreme knockback. And if you shield this move for any apparent reason, your shield will break. This move is an instant shield breaker. It's pretty much just like Ganondorf's up tilt, but just faster. And if this move is used stacked with like oomph or psych up, it's going to deal even more knockback and even more damage. And that's just extremely scary. If you're like around 40 or 50, even if you're a heavyweight, you can get hit by Hatchet Man at the right spot on the stage. You're most likely going to die from it. And then we have Sizz, Sizzle, and Kaboom. I'm only showing Sizz on screen because they all pretty much function the same except for Kaboom. Sizz comes out extremely fast. Sizzle comes out extremely fast, but Sizzle deals a slightly more damage. And Kaboom is like the medium speed one. And when that one comes out, it has an explosion at the end of it. And it can suck in opponents with its wind box. Before we end this section, it's worth noting that... Almost all of Hero's abilities can kill and they can simply be deflected or countered just by shielding. If you have a reflector, it's even better. Yes, it's going to go back at Hero and deal some damage, but if it's a melee attack, simply use your shield unless it's Hatchet Man, you, you, you don't want to shield against that move. Um, but every other move, simply use your shield or even counter it. If you have counters at your disposal, depending upon what character you're playing, there's Cena, Ike, I don't know, King K rule. If you have a counter, use that and be able to just drop that damage back at Hero. Hero can deal some crazy damage and has those moments where it's just jank RNG, but if you're able to use the RNG against him, you can get it to work for you. Okay everyone, that's all I have for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. I want to say that this video is largely part due to the Hero Discord. I've been asking a lot of questions there and they've been really nice to me and have been able to help me out with making this video possible, giving me some information, all the documents they have and their lab have been very helpful. Especially Hotsy Totsy. Big shout outs to her. Thank you for helping me out with labbing and giving me just general information on weaknesses to Hero. And I've been able to do my own research and then compile all together to make this video possible so huge shout outs to Hotsi Totsi and the hero discord for helping with this video in the future I have a couple of videos that are in the works like for instance another study video similar to what I did with MK Leo who I'll do it on I'm not exactly sure I have my ideas for it and we'll see how that all goes I might do a Twitter poll and maybe you guys who can who follow me on Twitter or check me out on Twitter can vote for whoever you guys want Anyways, people, that's the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time on Dark Sparks Gaming.